Well, howdy folks, Hellcrex here, and welcome to episode 91, Mercenaries Thoughts from the Inner Sphere. And today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite mechs of the Star League, the Guillotine. Yes, the Guillotine. 70 ton mech that really gets the job done. And it slices and dices and makes even Julian fries. Pregnant pause. All right. Now, guillotine. Well, the guillotine is 70 tons, like I said, is a 464. So you got a 7 ton mech with jump jets who's not going to uh, not like that. Carries around 22 heat sinks, 192 points of armor. Not bad. And now let's delve into its little arsenal. It carries around a large laser in the left arm, medium laser in the left torso, SRM6 in the center torso with a ton of ammo in the right torso, a medium laser in the right torso, two medium lasers in the right arm, and then jump jets, one in each torso and one in each leg. Now, a guillotine. Now, if you're lucky enough to get your hands on one of these that isn't a Star League mech, We'll delve into the Star League version here a little bit when it talks about variants. Now, it's one of those mechs that, well, I find it, you know, it's not fast. It's maneuverable because of the jump jet. So get into a city fight, uh, it can go over buildings. To get into a wooded fight, it can go through the woods pretty quickly by, by jumping through and getting to positions really quickly without having to run. And then when it gets into that position, it can hunker down and uh, turn itself into a little pillbox. Now, uh, you look at this thing and you go, wow, man, it's got all these weapons. Yeah, it has a lot of weapons and it has those 22 heat sinks to deal with it. This is kind of like the grasshopper, you know, kind of the same concept when it comes to it. A lot of energy weapons with a little bit of uh, missile weapons to back up the uh, fun in the sun. Now... I like to use this thing is you have your flankers going out there you get some five eight movers get out there kind of fix your enemy into position while you're moving up with your heavier mechs or maybe you're even slower medium mechs you know the ones that are say like the enforcers and stuff like that and trying to get into position you know so you back it up like with a hunchback or something and so you're you're moving up you get into position and then you can just unload. You can almost alpha strike with this thing every turn, except for a little bit of shutting something off every once in a while to do some cooling. Now, let's just talk about the heat for a second. Now, all right, we got a large laser. That's eight points of heat. And then we got the four medium lasers right there. That's 12, that's 20. And then we got an SRM four or six, I mean, that's four. That's 24, and if you walk, 26. So you're going to go up four on the heat scale just by firing everything, and if you're walking. Or not. Did I say that correctly? 24? Maybe it's running. And things you do when you're on the fly here. So you unload with everything. It has a 22 heat sinks. So all right, you go up four in the heat scale. Then you're looking at, I say you ran. Yep. Yeah. And then you turn around and then you have to shut something off you know the odds are you're probably going to look at it and go okay i can maybe shut off a the srm depending on the range it's a missile weapon and you got limited ammo which is only 15 shots with it maybe you're considering let's say you're a mercenary commander and you're doing a deep strike or something so you might shut that off or you could shut off a medium laser and you're going to drop by three but if you turned around and did that again, you're going to go back up. So you're going to have, you're going to get into that, that zone where you're going to be losing movement. So you're probably going to be, have to either consider shutting off either two medium lasers or just the SRM-6. I have a tendency to shut off the SRM-6 because I had, you know, I'd rather run around a little bit cooler. Now, that's the interesting thing about this thing you know you only have a 15 
hex or 15 inch range with your best weapon which is that large laser so your zone of control isn't all that great it's not bad 15 is pretty decent when you're considering everything it, you get a lot of mechs out there ringing around with lrm 10s 15s and 20s so they got out to a 20 one or somebody's got a ppc and they're sitting around at 18 so that or a uh ac5 you know not that an ac5 is really something that's scary because it's only five points damage but uh you're gonna have something that can reach out and let somebody know that yeah hey, hey i'm out here i'm gonna let you know that i'm shooting at you most time a lot of those weapons will miss at long range but hey it does happen there have been times you, you know you Somebody rolls the old infamous box cars and hits. All right, it, it happens. 11s and 12s, most likely. But you're going to do it. That's what you love about the game. You know, that's uh, one of those things that you're kind of gambling that uh, something's going to hit. Especially when it comes to energy weapons. And if you set yourself up for not heating up energy weapons, fire them every single time. Take the gamble. You know, odds are you're not gonna hit but if you do hit so much the better and what are you out energy it's coming out of the fusion reactor so just throw some more water, heavy water in now so once you get up there close and personal this is one of those mechs there have been many times where i played many games where you start getting up there and you get as you know when you get later into the game uh, i always like to call it uh battletech becomes rugby you end up with a rugby scrum everybody's almost point blank range kind of punk punking uh i can't even say it, punching kicking and all that fun stuff cat scratching and so you're gonna turn around and say all right you got jump jets you get a mech out there that's uh got some decent armor on the front that hasn't been hurt yet and if you can jump behind him and get into the area behind him this thing has enough energy weapons and srm to maybe do some decent uh damage to them all right and then if you do jump that's probably going to be three or four heat more so you're going up uh six of so the next turn you're probably going to have to shut off a couple medium lasers and then think about uh, uh what do i want to do with this either i'm gonna shoot shoot the uh, so try to get into somebody's backside again you do have the jump jet so you could move forward again behind some other cover or get behind a different mech if that one your main target isn't uh sitting where you want it to be and that kind of brings up an interesting point is getting lots of smaller cheaper units into the game as uh initiative sinks one of those things were you force the enemy to move their stuff more often than you because if you have a bunch of uh, infantry or lighter vehicles and stuff like that that don't cost very much or light mechs that don't have a lot of battle value speaking of battle value this thing is 1400 all right and so you can force them to move and then you can get in behind other targets you know making sure that your units that you want to move last move last all right that's kind of one of those things now variants let's just change books real quick here go grab the other one. Oh my gosh it's the star league what is this it's the guillotine 3n we were talking about the 4l now we got the 3n oh my gosh what is the 3n well, let's see, it's the same weapon systems except for some bit difference here. We have Indo Steel, so now we have basically three and a half more tons. It still has the 290, 192 points of armor, so that hasn't changed. But the big difference is 25 heat sinks versus the uh, 22. So now you're sitting with three more heat sinks. And that makes a big difference because when you look at everything, you see you get the four medium lasers, the SRM, the so large laser. So there's 24. You could jump. At, as if you jumped, it'd be 28. So you would only go up by three if you jump. So that makes a big difference just by having the endosteel. And 
if you can ever get your hands on, let's say you play in a scenario and you end up with a get into the find an old Star League mech or two somehow, and you got the endo steel on there. Oh yeah, that is something that is going to be very handy. It makes a world of difference because if you walk this thing, you're not worried about heat. It's only when you uh, jump this thing that you're going to worry about heat problems. That isn't bad. You know, that's not something to sneeze about. Now, since we're talking about variants, let's say you are uh, either in a star plane in a star league and you have one of these and you got your hands on some decent technology, you want to change this, or let's fast forward to 3050. You get your hands on this thing and you got the endo steel version. What I like to do with it, let's just bring this thing up. It's my favorite way of playing with this thing. Now, this may sound interesting, maybe not, but I change out those 25 heat sinks for 15 double heat sinks. What did you just do? Oh my gosh, you just saved a whopping 10 tons. What are you going to do with 10 tons? Well, I put two more large lasers on it. So now I have two large lasers regular large laser and then I replace the one in the arm with a ER large laser so now I can shoot out to 19 that's a little bit better and then once you get into 15 now you got three large lasers so you can do some decent damage then well I'm not there right there's two versions of this the one version I would do is leave the SRM in there no problem now the other version I do is replace that SRM. That's four tons that you're messing around with. I put on three more medium lasers and then another ton of ant or armor. So now you're sitting with more armor and now you have seven medium lasers. Wow. So then you got seven medium lasers and then you have, think about this one. That's 21 heat put in fire a large laser standard large laser that's 29 you walk no heat problems you run you only go up by one jump well you could go up by three you can do that for a turn and then shut something off now imagine jump in behind somebody and hit them in the rear arc and you hit them with 21 medium lasers and a large laser and you just what's the av average roll that you can have six seven and eight their rear armor is going to disappear in a flurry of molten uh, armor and then you're probably punching in with lots and lots and lots of hits now if you have the SRM version uh, you're still sitting there with uh, some decent damage hey hitting somebody with a couple uh, SRMs, you're probably going to hit them with probably three. You got some good chances for criticals if you punch through the armor. So that's kind of the variant I like to do with that one. Let you mull that one over. That's something for either the 3050 or if you're playing Star League campaigns type of deal. So, in the short and long of this, the Short and long of it, it's a good mech. Does the job. Does the job well. And I've delved into a little bit by combining this. Now, since this is a 464 mech, I like to get my hands on some other mechs that might have jump jets with them. And probably pair it up with something that's a little faster, maybe a 58. Typically uh i like running this thing with like a phoenix hawk and then a grasshopper get a grasshopper maybe two guillotines grasshopper and a phoenix hawk because the phoenix hawk make is a really good flanker and being a 696 that thing can get around jump in behind somebody and uh open up a lot of those uh rear arcs for somebody and then when you do that heck and you get in close you get into a, a larger game where you got everybody's kind of busy uh, 
pounding on each other. And then they're not expecting, because that maybe that Phoenix Hawk did its job of weakening a lot of areas on somebody's uh, rear armor on several different mechs, and this thing jumps in behind it and hits it hard. Oh, they're they're not going to be happy with you at all. I'll tell you that much. And there, like I said, been many games where that's what I've done, and get in behind them, and then they're a lot of times they know you you're gonna they know your play style, so they know that you're gonna be doing it. So it's like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna shoot at that uh, fast moving Phoenix Hawk in the meantime that's trying to sneak in behind you, or are you gonna try to pummel down those guillotines and focus on one of them, or maybe the grasshopper? So what you gonna do and a mech that has 192 points of armor well it's gonna last a little bit longer than the average mech out there that's pretty decent and oh another thing is if you're playing star league toss in a like maybe a warhammer too that's a decent uh fire support mech and then it has some uh decent stuff up close too and I've talked about that going back in the archives and talk where I've talked about the the Warhammer. That's a decent one. So I think I rambled on enough with this one, the guillotine. I love this mech. So if you got an opportunity to use one or pick one up, use it. They are a decent mech for the job. And I just like them. And well, there, let's see. Oh, wait a minute. I missed, forgot something in the uh the 4l version they talk about replacing the um large laser with a ppc yeah that could work but that's expensive a couple heat sinks so now you're running around 20 heat sinks and half of your heat is locked up in that ppc when you fire it yeah so you're firing out at 18 the difference between 15 and 18 a little bit different there is some modifiers in there the range is you can shoot out a little bit farther, 10 points of damage, nothing to sneeze about. But you're going to be chopping off a few of your hit sinks to do it. So, eh, not a big deal. It's uh, Your mileage may vary. It's up to the person, really. Some people just will not, they want nothing but PPCs and AC20s and all that fun stuff. I'm more into throwing a boatload of uh, weapon systems at you and see what sticks and a lot of times it's the uh, ones with a boatload of uh, weapon systems that do a lot of damage over the long run because the number of times I've seen somebody with a big gun fire at something and miss repeatedly and you're just kind of laughing at them going yeah it's all right so finally when you do you get hit it's like oh you finally did hit me and did some damage well I've just ripped a whole bunch of armor off you in the meantime so there you go. All right. Hope you guys like this one. And we will see you in the next one. Hellcracks out.